Buddy Larry here, Boxcars Garage. So, check it out. We've got a door in the hole. First time I ever seen a door on this side of the car. Pretty stoked. But we have got a lot of work to do. Let's get into it. I've got the um, the cow now welded to the remaining part of the car and uh, all in all I think that the weld up turned out pretty good I do need to go back and um, I've got a couple of uh, flatter areas that need to be uh, contoured I need to work on it from the back side and get it pushed up a little bit I got a couple of high spots that need to be knocked down it's uh, it's not a perfect job by no means, and it's not going to get to perfect with me. Uh, this car is uh, hopefully going to ride again, but it's not going to be a show car. Um, not sure exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be kind of on the gritty side because I'm not willing to put the level of effort into this particular specimen um, to get it to that other level. It's just unobtainium for me as far as time. Um, I've got other projects ahead of it. And um, I'd be happy just to move this on uh, to somebody else that's just wanting to have fun with it and turn it into a rat rod or whatever you call them, a period hot rod, jalopy, whatever your term is, um, is what I believe this car is going to be in the future. It's already had some, you know, homeschool repairs done in it. This is a, a brazed in um, metal panel here on the top. There was a lot of heat that was used with that braze-in job. Um, so there is some, you know, warpage and ripples that are, are going on um, along this perimeter. And uh, that's just how it's probably going to stay. I'm going to do a little bit of hammer and dolly work on that. And if I was to do something with this top, I would probably make a uh, upholstered cap that would... Um, basically hide some of the uh you know the crudeness of the plug itself and i'd probably take it beyond where that plug was welded in and um, i could probably hide 90 percent of that ugly with um, a cool period top 
and that might be what I do. We'll see. But uh, going around the car, I've got some body mounts now that are in the the front holes of this cow, and that's on both sides. And then I've got the body mounts here in the wheel well areas that you know I thought if I get if I get it mounted to the frame in the back and in the front then whatever is happening in the middle should be right i.e. my door opening should be right if it's anchored in the back and if it's anchored in the front but as isn't turning out to be the case and um, that is what I'm going to be working on today this bottom area you can see how it flares out that is not my intended body gap this cow really needs to go back in order to bring those lines in parallel with each other but the problem with that is is that you know this cow is bolted down now it, it's where it should be so I'm searching for a solution to bring that together that allows this to remain where I believe it's supposed to be I need to see that this had the effect that I was going for which is lowering or uh, shortening up this gap here at the bottom and also adding some uh, some gap space up here so what I did was I took a piece of tubing because I don't have the um, the cow rebuilt and I don't have the inner structure the foot that the uh, frame sits on I'm trying to achieve you know an adjustment of this cow without really having any structure under it so what I ended up doing was Behind this panel, I've got a, um, a half-inch piece of tube that it, um, it's resting under this lip that these two body pieces um, make when they fit together, kind of like a shelf. And I put pressure on that with a, with a jack, and then I uh, tack welded it to the um, outside of the frame, which you could kind of barely see down here Tack, I've tacked it there and I've tacked it um, on the bottom edge of that shelf holding that into position so right now I've got this cow um, being held up and supported with that piece of tubing and then um, that tubing is far enough away to where I think I could go ahead and leave it in place until I build that replacement cow bottom and uh, structure and leave that tubing in place and that's going to allow me to have this uh, cow basically held like in the right position where I can build to that position with my replacement panel that's the idea um, I haven't went ahead and welded this up yet because all I want to do now is fit in the door and see what I notice uh, as far as a different hopefully it's a positive change and how the door fits in the space and if it doesn't you know it'll it'll give you some information too in the fact that this isn't going where I need to go maybe I need to focus my attention up here and not so much from there so anyway we're gonna get the door put into place here and see what we end up with Looks promising. Still a little bit tight right here. Here in that space, it's overall the margins are too tight. Well, they're a little too tight, um, but they are parallel. 
which is a positive. This area up here I'm willing to massage and make consistent by just removing material or adding material. So I'm not overly concerned about this top. My biggest concern is to get the sides parallel with each other with the door. Now that door needs to drop down a quarter of an inch on this forward edge. I want to hold this at the height that it is, but now I want to push out from this right here, like in a diagonal. I want to push this out. I want to close this up. So now what I'm going to do is try to um, push uh, this portion of the cow out a little bit. I've got, uh, I guess, a spreader bar. It's a it's half of a wood clamp, really, and um, I'm going to use that as a spreader bar. I've got a porta power that uh, I'm going to use this little ram right here and uh, hopefully push that out and uh, see if that does what I want to do. This porta power, I just scored this the other day from the recycler and um, clean it up a little bit, got it going. And I'm tickled to death. I've been trying to find a, a working one for a while. And uh, so today is its debut. We will see if it can influence this the way we want it to go. And uh, let me set you up on a stand and we will, we will get after it. Okay, so I think we got this um, passenger door in the right ballpark where we want it to be. Uh, we got lucky and... Um, was able to find some sag in this cowl and popping that dude up started to make everything everything line up the way it should i've got some uh, some good preliminary door gaps in this dude what i'm going to do now is uh, i'm going to go ahead and pull this door out of the opening and we're going to go over on the driver's side and uh, we're going to try to do the same recipe as far as uh, lifting up the cowl I'm going to get the laser set up on the inside, and um, we want to get these, uh, these two sides uh, leveled out um, while we do the lift and uh, keep everything uh, samey same on both sides. So let me uh, get this door out, and we will set up on the driver's side and get at it. Gotta keep yourself leveled up. So inside the car here, what I'm getting set up to do is I need to push this cow forward over here on the uh, on the driver's side, and um, that's what uh, that's what this one is doing. And it really helped uh, fitment of the door. It pushed that up. It really made a lot of things happen for me. I'm hoping for the same over there because right now that is one location where I'm a little tight. And um, I, uh, I had to do a, a lot of cross-check uh, to get myself ready for the driver's side. I established a... Uh, a point there toward the back you can see that new piece of steel I pulled measurements from that up here forward to make sure that my B pillars were in the same location um, relative to that that pulling point and uh, so I got both of the B pillars um, in the right spot and then um, using this driver or passenger side as an example, I put an angle gauge on the inside of this jam and that ended up with the way this car is sitting right now, that ended up at like 89.3. Um, so that angle, um, my thought was if I get the B pillars in the same location and I get the angles the same, I should 
virtually be the same with both my door openings and I believe that I am my uh, initial fit up is is good um, it needs some some tweaks my uh, my gap here on the back side is um, not exactly where I'd like it to be right now and uh, this front is a little bit tight here in this area but I think I'm gonna get that when I push it out um, so we're gonna give that a shot and uh, see where we're at so I'll get you up here on the tripod and uh, you can uh, view the pain well I think I'm ready I've got my uh, quarter power in position and I've got uh, my pusher in position and it's on the um, it's on the dash area there on the cow I'm just going to uh, take it easy and watch this door see what it does right now I don't have any space at all so Whatever I achieve is gonna definitely gonna help. Tell you what, I am gonna lock that in where it's at because I like the gap here and um, I like my uh, my gap here. It's not bad. Um, I've got some issues going on here up high. That I've got to sort out, but I think I'm in the ballpark. I'm going to go ahead and take take it. I'm going to tack in the brace to the cow, um, pushing it out, and then we're going to come back and we're going to go after this right here. Okay, we're going to see if we can get this roof raised up and open this up a little bit more. I don't know what it's going to do. We shall see. I don't know if the issue is in my roof being low or um, this rain gutter area being low. Could be a combination of the two. But, uh, we will see what we come up with. Are we moving? didn't get much out of it. <laughs> we didn't get much. Still raising the roof. Well, maybe we did. Let's see here. I 
just I had too much pressure on that um, bumper jack. I think I was holding it up a little bit. So um, I'm happy with where it is at right now. The roof that is. I mean, as far as my gap goes. Um, I still haven't got. I'm still not where I want to be in this corner right here. And I think the reason may be <clears throat> because on the on the passenger side I had cut a relief around here and I had went ahead and I had cut where I had welded it back on up here. So it probably cutting that relief helped me when I pushed this back. I got, I, that's probably what I'm going to have to do. I'm probably going to need to take this door out of the way and cut me a relief right here where it changes angles. say somewhere around here but it could virtually be anywhere in there I'm gonna go check on the other side and probably do the same as the other side that's that's probably why I don't have a I don't have the gap that I need right now is that in addition to pushing forward, I should have cut a relief there because I probably, what I'm probably doing by pushing it forward is putting back the angle that this used to be before it, everything got fatigued. The bottom, the bottom rotted out, all the other bits and pieces of damage that happened through the year. I'm sure it probably had an effect on this windshield post. Um, so I probably need to get back to that area, get back to where it was, and then I'm going to have to do that by putting a putting a little cut there, and then I'll probably go. I'll go ahead and cut my uh, cut my brace free up here on the top side. We'll go through the pushing exercise again, and um, see if we don't end up opening this up once and for all. I think we will. Okay, we're about ready to put the hydraulics to it. Give her some breathing room. Look at where I'm at right now. I think my quarter power is out of power. I got a leak. I think we got an O-ring. It's giving up some pressure. That's what I think is going on. Let me see if I can tighten it up a little bit. Looks like there's a packing gland. Be able to tighten it up a little bit. I think I'm bleeding off pressure a little bit. 
Hey guys, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Um, we're going to call this part one. There will be a part two because we've got some open items that we've got to sort out. Let me go ahead and spin you around. We'll talk about them. So thank goodness for uh, Facebook groups. I, uh, I reached out to my uh, information source, which is uh, there's a 3536 Ford forum group that has always helped me out in the past. And there's also a 35 to 40, I believe, group that's um, willing, to, willing to help a guy out when he needs some information as well. So I reached out to them this morning. I need to find out. I don't have anything that tells me that this B pillar um, on both sides here, of course, is at the right elevation. Now, fitting up the doors, you know, making sure that the line is right going across here, you would think would be enough to let you know, hey, that's either okay or it's not okay. And I've been able to get those things lined up, but I'd like to go and have some form of a reference to see if there's any sag in this B pillar because neither one of the B pillars have been fastened to a frame for a very long time. And the only thing that is keeping the orientation of this car where it is, is these uh, wheel well bolts. And I'd be surprised if this body through all the years is rigid enough to be able to keep itself aligned with just being, you know, connected here in the back. So I reached out to the group to see if they can help me out with a reference here. I asked them, you know, I'm not dealing with too much as far as what I can measure and cross check because I don't have a floor. Bottom part of my B pillar is rotted. Um, but what I could do is reference from either like a, a frame level to this bird's mouth right here or any other point that they want to pass me. You know, they could go from the frame to a, a body line detail, whatever. Um, I just need something for a cross check. I wish I would have had that um, before or during my initial, you know, door fitting, but I didn't. I think I mentioned in my video already that, you know, the aggravating thing is like when you're doing all this and you're checking, pulling all the measurements and whatnot, what are you missing? That's the question that, you know, is bouncing around in your headspace. What am I missing? Well, that was one of the things that I was missing. I needed to figure out um, what is right here on the B pillar. So we've got that out there. Hopefully get an answer on it, you know, today. We did get some strategic bracing in place. I haven't got any diagonals welded in yet. I did check the inside of the cab here for square and it was pretty square. Um, that being said, I'll probably still put some diagonals in it. Just makes it that much harder to move around in here. And there it seems to be, there's probably gonna be a fair amount of moving around in here um, as I begin to work on the inner jams and the patch panels and the rockers and you know whatever so but we did get this car i think in the neighborhood um, of where it needs to be right now we're going to get it a little bit tighter and that will lead us into our part two which is going to be the final placement and weld in of this donor B pillar that I picked up. This is off of a sedan and it's really close to what would have been stock here in this area. Might be a few adaptations um, in the, the steps of the jam itself, but nothing that this gets me a lot closer than trying to fabricate one, you know, at least the skin portion for sure. So we're going to get this welded in after we've checked the B pillar. Um, the door gaps on the driver's side wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't as good as the passenger side for right now. 
but things can be moved. We're not, you know, we're not done, done. So we're close. This upper area here, I wasn't able to influence as much as I wanted to. But uh, we're going to move the car around a little bit more. And if I have to, I might move this eyebrow a little bit and move it up. I was thinking if I just do a small slice down here along the, just right above the eyebrow there, and then push it in and then weld it up, I'd basically perform a, an eyebrow lift on this car. But I got to make sure I don't, it doesn't get weird, you know, when it gets back into the stock profile, it's going to be the trick is to figure out how you can do that without doing like the entire thing because then you could have a crooked eyebrow and that would not be good. But uh, it's coming together slowly. I appreciate your patience if you made it to this part of the video. Um, thank you so much for sticking in, sticking in for the long haul. We're right on the holidays here, so I'm hoping to get some extra time in on the, the car. I would like to uh, start moving toward these, uh, fabricating these complicated patch panels. You know, for me, they're complicated. I'm a cheap Charlie, really, when it comes to um, some of this stuff, so I'm going to try to make these patch panels if I haven't mentioned it before if you haven't caught me saying that before I've got a couple pieces of equipment that uh, that's what they're supposed to do if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing with them but uh, yeah so she is rough as a cob yeah so, thanks again for watching. I'm going to catch you guys later, and have a good holiday. See ya.